Hey there! Most of my time playing KSP lately has been taken up by testing and judging submissions for the uh, Better Stock Craft Challenge. I'm averaging about 10 to 15 minutes per submission now, and with 50 entries that it's coming out to about 9 hours of flying and testing. Pretty crazy how long it's been taking, but spreading it out over a week or two has made it manageable. I figured it'd be worthwhile to go over how I'm judging the designs for this competition, and it should actually be useful for anyone who is designing SSTOs of their own. So even if you aren't a part of this contest, you should still get some useful info out of this video. Now the contest itself is designed a basic, entry-level SSTO that would replace the Aeris 4A. There are four major categories that break the scoring into, and each category is weighted differently. The first category is construction. What I'm looking for here is a craft that uses simple construction techniques and isn't overly complex in its design. This should be a design that a novice SSTO builder can look at and understand how it is put together. If I don't think they will be able to pull it apart and put it back together, the design isn't going to score very well in this category. This section is weighted the highest with a maximum of 40 points possible here. Next up is low altitude flying. The major things I'm looking at here are how well the SSTO takes off from the runway, how well it handles with and without SAS enabled, and how easy it is to land. Designs that take off quickly and aren't prone to flipping or don't have weird flight characteristics are going to score well here. This category has a maximum of 15 points available. After testing that, I move on to the ascent to orbit. There isn't much to grade here, but the main things I'm looking for are a decent thrust to weight ratio, a good amount of control over the SSTO while climbing, and then overall how easy I find it to get into orbit. I fly a lot of SSTOs in this game, so if I can't get it to orbit fairly easily, then I could see a newer player struggling with it. This is the second heaviest weighted category, with a maximum of 30 points possible. After reaching orbit, I test the design's capabilities in space. The major thing I'm looking for is how much delta V is left in the tanks and how much range the design is capable of. I cap off the maximum points for range at an intercept with the moon, and that is a good goal for an entry level SSTO. Anything more is gravy, but I don't reward the extra range. Docking and control capabilities are also tested here with the maximum of 15 points possible. After all that, I have a small bonus category that has a maximum of 4 additional points available and is based off of things like unique designs and concepts, uh, cool aesthetics, adding science capabilities, and whatever else I liked. So now that you know how I grade these things, I'm going to run through the process using a submission by Filthy on the forums. The design is called the Wolfen Hybrid and ends up scoring pretty well overall. Let's break it down and see why. So jumping right into the construction category, we pull up the craft in the space plane hangar. Right off the bat, I'm checking the part count. I dock points for crafts that clock in at over 50 or 100 parts. It isn't a major deduction, but the original Eris has 39 parts, so I figured the design should stay close to that number. The Wolfen has 59 parts, so it loses a point there. Once the craft is loaded up, I'm looking for the basic essentials such as a ladder and some form of power generation. Ideally, I should be able to see solar panels or RTGs pretty easily. They shouldn't be clipped or hidden so that a newer player doesn't overlook them when rebuilding the design. This one actually has two RTGs tucked under the wings, which could easily be missed, so there's pretty small deduction for that. Next, I'm checking for any major or extensive part clipping. This is regardless of if the debug F12 menu is used. I'm not worried about the ends of wings clipping and minor overlaps. As long as the bases of the parts can easily be seen and how they are mounted is visible, then I'm happy. This design does have some things clipping through each other, but it's all negligible. Next up is to check the center of mass and center of lift placements when the plane is full and emptied of its fuel. At no time should the center of mass move behind the center of lift. Ideally, the center of lift is close but not inside the center of mass bubble to leave some maneuverability without getting unstable. The Wolfen has great fuel drain characteristics and good center of lift placement overall, so no deductions were needed. After checking the fuel drain, I look at the fuel ratios themselves. A basic guideline I use is the plane should have around 75 liters of liquid fuel for each jet engine. If no jet fuel tanks were used, then the tweakable system should be used to drain some oxidizer out of the tanks. If this isn't done, then the SSTO will end up with excess oxidizer, which is just useless mass to carry around. The final thing to look at is the construction of the SSTO itself. As I said earlier, the design should be easy to build using the most basic construction techniques. We're talking about a stock craft here, not a highly advanced design. 30% of the SSTO's overall score stems from the building techniques in my scoring system. So looking at the Wolfen, I see a lot of extra fuel tanks being used instead of merging them into a bigger tank. I'm not sure why it was built like that, but it may have been to stretch the design out a little bit, as a larger tank is actually a little shorter than the three smaller tanks on the sides here. The wing design looks really cool, but might be a little bit more than is needed for this design. However, the way the wings are placed are easy to see, so a beginner might be able to recreate it with some trial and error. The use of the rapier engines here makes building even easier, but hopefully they don't bog down the performance of the craft too much. Overall, this looks like a little bit more than a basic design. It is what I would expect a player to do after spending a fair amount of time designing more basic SSTOs. A quick glance at the action group should show basic controls and nothing weird or complex, and everything looks good here. Some points were lost overall, but not too much. Now we can move out of the spaceplane hangar and onto the runway. 
First up is to test the action groups and make sure they all make sense. I like to see the independent toggles for jet and rocket engines, unless it's a rapier based design where I'd like to at least see a toggle for the air breathing or closed cycle modes. Now I just throttle up and pull back to test the takeoff capabilities. If the basic plane design is good, then the SSTO should lift up fairly quickly. If it can get airborne without using over half the runway, then I'm happy. Any tail striking, veering, or wobbling will lose some points, and needing the entire runway to take off will lose extra points on top of that. The wolf in here hops up pretty quick without any issue, so it gets full points there. Testing out how the plane flies is fairly important to me. I think one of the first things someone's going to do when flying a stock craft for the first time is to fly around the space center here and play around with it for a bit. I try to simulate that by doing some hard banking and all sorts of stuff. If I don't lose control with SAS on and everything seems good there, then I try flying without SAS enabled to see how it handles. The Wolfen does very well here. It's a little bit on the stable side, but it doesn't flip out, which is great. Flying without SAS on is easy as well, as it only needs about two notches of trim for level flight. After all that is done, I bring in for a landing. I try to test out various landing speeds and simulate easy and rough landings. If it can take a good beating without exploding, then it will get full points here. The Wolfen holds together pretty well and it glides in easily, so it gets the full 5 points. Now it's time to take it to orbit. The first thing I'm looking at is the thrust to weight ratio of the craft. I'm not actually doing any number crunching, but I use climbing angles as my guide. If the SSTO can accelerate while pitched up to 60 degrees, it will get the full amount of points here. This is my personal preference, as I can't stand flying with a low thrust to weight ratio. I don't dock very much for not being able to climb at 60 degrees though, and if it can accelerate at a 45 degree pitch then it still gets the 85% of the max points here. The Wolfen actually has a pretty good thrust weight ratio for a rapier based design. Using two of the engines helps give it more power, which I like. My biggest gripe with the rapier engine is its lower thrust, so I'm always glad to see a rapier based SSTO perform really well. For the actual ascent, I take a fairly basic profile. After reaching 10 kilometers, I aim to keep about 100 meters per second of vertical speed throughout the climb by slowly pitching down. For rapier engines, I'll leave them in auto and try to throttle down before they flame out to milk a little extra speed out of the air breathing portion before switching over to the rockets. During this portion of the climb, I'm watching how well the SSTO holds a pitch heading and if it is easy to control. Multiple engine designs usually induce some yaw before they flame out and the design should be able to counteract that yaw fairly easily. The ascent should be fairly straightforward and easy in order to get the full amount of points here. If there's a complex switching of action groups or if dealing with flaming out is problematic, some points will be taken off. The Wolfen has a pretty easy ascent is easy to control due to the added reaction wheels, and there's plenty of fuel on board to allow the rapier engine to switch to auto at a fairly low speed. I still tried to milk the air breathing portion a little longer, but it really wasn't necessary. Once the SSTO is circularized at a low orbit, there isn't much left to test. I kick on the RCS and test the translation controls. Looking at the nav ball, the nose shouldn't move much when docking. This design does really well due to its reaction wheels. The dedicated docking light is a nice touch as it has its own action group. All that's left to do is to see what kind of range the design has. I don't actually calculate delta V, but the maximum possible points will be available if it can reach the moon intercept with some fuel to spare. Like the Wolfen, there were a lot of designs that had plenty of range to go beyond the moon, but I didn't give any extra credit for that. The very last step is to toss out some bonus points based on how I felt about the design. For the Wolfen, I added an extra point because I liked the way the design looked and handled, and another point for a good use of the rapier engines. I didn't feel like the rapier engine held back the design at all, which is refreshing to see. And that wraps up the testing process. At the time that I'm recording this, I haven't finished testing all the designs. Most of the SSTOs I've tested so far have scored fairly well, so it's shaping up to be a pretty close competition. After I finish testing, I need to go back and redesign my bolt that I designed, as there are a lot of things I want to change on it. It's too late for the competition, but it'll be good to finalize the design and make it better. Alright, I'm not sure how interesting this video has been for those of you that aren't involved in the challenge, and I'm sorry if it wasn't, but I'll be making more of my regular videos after this one. Testing all these designs has been fun, but there hasn't been much room for doing anything else. Now that it's out of the way, it should be business as usual. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. Until next time, take it easy.